So remember when we did the reaction and you did your bend over back thing and hurt yourself? Yeah, yeah, I did. And how during it, yeah. I said, most of the stuff he was doing was incredible, but the easy thing was doing the push-ups on the escalator. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And a lot of stupid babies were like, no, it's not that you're old, damn it. You should just put it up on your, on your channel. Yeah, I'm going to, but I just I had to show folks here. So there you go. I can't see it. Hold on, hold on. I had to stop there because of the wall. That's oh, yeah. on that's that's on a that's well, on should... a full stomach and I was not warmed up. It's not that hard, guys. Well you should do it with somebody on your back, you little bitch. He didn't have anybody <laughs> on the back. Hey, welcome back to our stupid Rex Susie and Tim Corbin. I'm Rick. And you can follow us on Instagram, Twitter for more Juicy Juicy content. Juicy content. content. Make sure you smash that like button. Boom! And subscribe if you haven't already. If you haven't done that, what the? F and don't dislike this video because we won't say. Yeah, you can't anymore, can you? <laughs> there, you still can. They're slow. I know they're it. slow on it, and I can still see it. So don't hurt my feelings. People are still gonna comment <laughs> with a thumbs down. <laughs> I just find it funny all the people that always have our notifications clearly because we always get no down votes immediately. Immediately before it's even watched. Yeah, yeah. So, so funny. Y'all are funny. Today we're doing a movie review, everybody. Of our 100th Molly... No, it's not 100. <laughs> I think it's 20 Our 100th Fahad Fasil film. Yeah, it's true. I think it's 20-something, though, uh, of uh, Malayalam and probably 20-something of uh, Fahad Fasil. Uh, <laughs> he's over half of them. Uh, definitely. Yeah. Uh, but uh, the uh, 2000, I think it's 16 film. You go ahead. Yeah, Mahashente Pratikaram. Uh, the comedy drama thriller. Also known as a dramedy or camera. Uh, directed by, say his name for me, please. Uh, directed by Delish Poffin. Whom we know from, um... Thondi Madaram Driksh Kashakyam. We call it the, the necklace train. one because it's we a hard it name for us. Movie, yeah. And then Joji as well Joji. from this, this year. And of course we go backwards in how we watch that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we go back and watch the first stuff. Uh, I guess we went middle... Newest, last, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I guess, uh, of his trilogy with but, the Hot Fossil, I suppose. In all defense, we did Joji because we wanted to be able to talk about it in the, in the it moment. just released, yeah. Absolutely. Uh, but obviously starring uh, Fahad Fossil, a couple of And people, his Subin uh, is his con uh, Subin, constant of partner. Course. And, and uh, Aparna Bellamorali. And then a few other people. This guy is the dad. Yeah, Anthony Corchi. Uh, who I called the Indian um, Stan Lee. Yes, like. exactly what he looks Stan like. Stan Lee, right? Yeah, the Indian Stan bit. Lee. Uh, but once again, it's, uh, it came out in 2016, so it's going to be 100 films for it. If you haven't watched it, please go watch it. Come back, uh, and uh, we're going to get into it. Rick, your initial thoughts, please. So I, I love watching Dancing with the Stars. Uh -huh. um, and one of my, the judge on there that... I love all of the judges, but if you get a 10 from Len... That's like a big deal. Mm -hmm. A 10 from Len is like, because he's the most critical about the artistry and the art form itself. Yeah. And he's consistently booed if he doesn't particularly like something that everybody else seemed to like. Mm -hmm. I'll probably be booed for my take on the movie. It, I, I don't have a, a, I just, for the majority of the film, I just found myself, I will say this, I thought the, the score was pretty and I thought the sound design was excellent, but other than that, it I never I never really cared about any of the characters, and I didn't know why the story was worth telling. I've read a lot of reviews on it. I've watched Jimmy's review on it. I've seen the things that people have said about the nuances that they felt were incorporated and intended by the creators. It just I I wrote in my notes that I've it's weird to me that a, a two hour film can't engage me in a way that I've had 60 second commercials get me connected to characters and, mm. and feel. So I w I'm sure I'm in the minority. I, my, I might even be with you. I didn't like it. Mm. No, I really enjoyed this film. So it's actually shocking to me that you didn't like this film um, and shocking to me that you couldn't relate to it. Um, but anyways, yeah, no, I-, I, I I'd I, love to know why you, I, why I you think I thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, most, you could definitely see the, the director's growth from, from each passing film in terms of his, um, his style and his way he cuts films and obviously the budget uh, definitely sure uh, you could definitely tell goes up uh, in which 
it happens. Uh, if you have a success after success, you get more money and you can hopefully do what you want to do. Um, yeah, I, th I loved uh, almost everything about it. I thought it was absolutely hilarious. I thought it was um, endearing. Um, I thought it was a unique story. I personally do not think you need to have a point outside of he wanted revenge. He got it and he has love along the way. I love that. I thought it was a, a hilarious, a simple storyline for the film and I, I, I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it. It's actually quite shocking. Even the love interest you didn't enjoy, I find that quite, quite interesting. Yeah, I, I just, I found, I found the love interest to, I just didn't ever feel connected to the couple or care about their relationship. I found the need to get revenge in that situation Obviously, I think it was intentionally done the way that it was done as to not be as serious as it would ordinarily be. But like it starts off by saying it's based on true events. And for me, when a movie starts off saying based on true events, my feeling going into it is, okay, this is something you feel like I need to know. I, I don't know why I, I don't. needed to know it. Oh, yeah, I think that's a wrong way to go into the film, definitely. I think it's just, this is a true story. It's a funny thing that happened. Here's yeah, the story. It, I think that, I think that's enough for me because I thought it was it was definitely entertaining for me. My wife watched it with me; she loved it as well. Um, yeah, so I think it was it was purely just for a this is a, a funny, serious so thing what, that happened. That I thought what really parts nice. did you find hysterically funny? Uh, lots of the subtle stuff. Um, obviously, the fact that um, <laughs> um, his whole wanting revenge just for that, and and the whole I'm not going to wear slippers thing. Um, I thought that was funny. The fact that he wouldn't wear his slippers? Yeah, I thought it was a dumb, funny thing. Absolutely. This is not like a laugh out loud, like schlap oh, no, no. funny that we're talking no, about. No, I know that. This is just like... But this... I just asked him, what, what was it you found hysterically yeah. funny? And I don't... Oh, this is not like a... a I'm, what, I'm just talking like, what do we just watch? Um... Uh, Pushpak, where they're, you know, they're just doing slapstick, really funny things. This is like a subtle, oh, everything's funny, really, funny, I know, yeah, I know everything's really stuff. subtle and across I, the board. I, I enjoyed that. I've enjoyed, like, the uh, the subtle um, music that came in. I thought the score was, like, I even this, though that's yeah, what you said as well, I it was one of the high points one. of the film. Not only the songs, but no, the, whole the, thing. Um, the, I thought it was a quirky kind of thing that added to the comedy of it. Um, a lot of the, it's a lot of more situational humor um, that I just thought was like funny ridiculousness. I, I even went back and watched the trailer again um, to see if maybe I missed something and what, in, in some way. It's why I did so much research afterwards and went, okay, I want to read reviews. I want to see some other reviews. Uh, what, if, what is it that I'm missing? And, and the things that I read in the reviews, like some of the subtleties of him holding his dad's hand when he's laying next to him and the transition that we see him take from just being static in his telling people to lift their head and put their chin down to actually beginning to see things through himself as a photographer, it, I, it just didn't mm. ever really resonate with, mm. with me. And I, 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 I found, I didn't know, like when I watched the trailer, again, I watched it and I thought, yeah, that's the movie. Uh, so yeah. again, I know I'm in the minority and that's okay. Uh, not every movie is gonna float everybody's boat. I know there's people who didn't like Titanic. Yeah, it's a shitty film. Um, but yeah, no, it, it's fine. You, it was, the film wasn't meant for you. That, that's totally yeah, fine. Totally. Um, that, and I have no, like there's times where I would say I don't like a movie and I would point out to the things artistically that I would say, here's why I think it's awful and I don't understand why people like it. I don't have any bone to pick at all with people who might like the film. Um, it's not boyhood, you know what I mean? It's, it's just, for me, I, I, I just never, I, the biggest thing for me was I didn't really, the believability factor was for the most part believable. I believe that these people lived in this village and I believe that this was what, I was being a fly on the wall, watching these different things take place. I just didn't necessarily care about what was gonna happen to the characters throughout the film and even the, him getting the revenge, I didn't care whether he got it or not. And I didn't understand why he felt such a deep need to do that and why everybody was so proud of him for having beat the guy up. That, and he, he the one thing I found strange too was like in the fight, he suddenly knew MMA. 
in the second fight that he didn't know in the first one. So it was, and I still I get think, it. I think you took the film a little too seriously. I think that that was probably the main thing. It was meant to be taken more as a, a jovial kind of, it was like, it was not, not like. But it's not farcical, right? No, no, not like, yeah. not like uh, how I thought Mirac by Anthony was. No, no, there's all ridiculousness. This was like, this is a story. It's, he takes himself seriously and it's funny because of that part of it. Uh, and also just the situational stuff and the way that the, the director kind of films it. But uh, yeah, if, if you took it, I think the way you did, I, I, can, I can see why you didn't like it, absolutely. But I, I, this is one of those films that I just, I thought it was really, I, it's probably in my opinion, of the three, the most watchable, not the best film, but I, I think Joji's the best film and probably artistically, just because he had more money and, and like it, there was some of the issues I had was obviously budgetary. You could tell the audio was bad at some points and it was a little, slow in just a few points uh towards the beginning um but in terms of watchability just since since the funny aspect of it and i actually me and my wife really uh, liked the relationship of the the last couple uh him and the what her whatever her name is the um, girl who's the sister to the guy jim c yes yes jim c uh, uh i thought their relationship was really nice i thought their chemistry was really good i thought i thought a lot of funny things like she did when she called him up she's like we're gonna fall in love soon uh and kind of stuff like that and so I enjoyed that whole aspect of it, um, but we can talk about like Fahad Fasil, uh, even though this was probably a, it is a very different um, portrayal than most of his films, because most of them have like more of a darker edge to them. Yeah. A little bit. That a little we've bit. Seen. Not all of them, because we've seen Bangalore Days, which he was maybe a, a little similar to it, but um, he has this quality to him that I've never seen a man with a creepy mustache that looks so endearing <laughs> when he smiles. He just, he's like, he has that lovability aspect to him. And maybe that's why he's so creepy because it's a lovability smile. And when mm -hmm. he tries to be creepy, it's like really like menacing almost. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, but this, I, I thought he did a, a, a fantastic job. Um, and what do you think about his performance? Not the film as a whole. I, I didn't, I don't fault anything in it, but it wasn't anything that I was riveted by. Mm. Uh, of all the performances I've seen him do, it was the one I've been the least interested in while I was watching him. Mm. Um, it reminded me of like when I watched, I use this reference a lot. If I, if I watch Daniel Day-Lewis in Nine, it's, I, it, that's different because there's a, a, a definitive weakness for Daniel Day-Lewis in that. And this, I wouldn't say this was a weakness per se as much as it was um, that non-tangible aspect that causes me to want to watch the characters that he portrays this mm -hmm. just this one for me was just like this th throughout the, the biggest part for me was i didn't know why and i think a big problem <laughs> let me finish that sentence i didn't know why i needed to be, be caring about this situation and i was trying to i mean the last thing i want to do is not care about a character when i'm watching a film i think a big throw for me was the fact that i'm being told a story that at the beginning is said it's based on true events and none of the events are worth remembering. They're just like, like you just said, it's a story about a guy in a village who is a photographer it's, and all the log lines, everything, everybody talks about the simplicity and here I am, it's based on true events. This must be something that's important or weird or you're not gonna believe what you see. So with, with no context, no preface coming into it, uh, especially with a Malayalam film that typically has some things happen that cause you to go, what the heck, and has a twist in some way. So it literally, when it ended, I went, huh? Yeah, I don't, I don't think you got the film. <laughs> Which is fine, once yeah. again. But once again, on the acting side, uh, Subin, uh, he was... He was, he was good he didn't have much to do in this film at he didn't all have, yeah um he was he was very supporting in terms of like he was pushing on even less than supporting in, right. in his, his role right the girl i thought we've seen her before i feel like have we not right uh which which girl the, the his last first girl. The, no, the, the last girl, girl he actually oh, yeah, wants we to have. be with uh she was in uh is it the plain one is that the plain one? Where I think it is. Yeah. So, so, yeah. so Rari Potru. The one that everybody liked that we didn't, uh, right. that we didn't like, but she was in now cause she looked familiar to me. I thought she did well. I liked her chemistry with Fahafa. I actually liked even the, the, the one that he was in love with and then 
she left him to go be with that guy. Right. Uh, I liked them as well. I really enjoyed the father. Like I said, I uh, I thought he was <laughs> super into. He looks like Indian Stan Lee to me. He does. A hundred percent. I did like, like I was really glad we brought it back and we found out why he went walking away and it was because he was taking pictures of the bats. I love bats. Yeah. Um, but again, yeah. And I don't want to harp on it because um, I, I may be the only person on the planet who doesn't like it. That's okay. Um, what do you think? Because you said you liked the score. What do you like about the score? I did. I just thought it was really a beautiful score yeah. throughout. Uh, I, I, I just felt that the kind of things that you want from a score, it was not noticeable when it, you needed it to be. Mm -hmm. It didn't. It, what, there was none, which is a, a testament also to the director making the choices for the score. Uh, and I felt like. It just was pretty much strong throughout. Yeah. Like, what a what a solid score. And I really, at the very beginning, and it helps when we watch these things, and I've got my laptop and I have my AirPods on, because I can hear the sound design so much better. Yeah. It's far more comparable to theatrical sound when you've got that, because you can hear the left to right, the fronts and the backs. Mm -hmm. And there was really a lot of detail paid to the sound design, especially early on, some of the sounds at the very beginning. I was impressed with the sound design. Um, yeah, this film shocked me a lot because even though you liked the score, there was a lot of moments that I thought the score added humor into the film as mm -hmm. well. Um, and so I, I like that aspect. And what did you think I, about the flash mob? I know there was a lot of stuff that we probably didn't get jokes on that were culturally cultural yeah, inside. Probably. Like even, I'm suspecting when Subin sang that little song, the little juice song that he sings when they... Mm. Um, I didn't get that. Yeah, I, I was like, okay, yeah, reference. okay, whatever. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Did you like the flash mob? <laughs> uh, no, because it again, it was this like non sequitur random thing. The dancing was okay. Um, I'm like, are they going for Napoleon Dynamite or are they going for? I think if I had been pre, if I think if I had been prepared for the prospect yeah, that yeah, it was off beat versus uh, either a. a Rom-com, a drama, or a combination of the of the two. Um, yeah, I just yeah. Yeah, yeah. it went over my head. I kids. liked I liked the fact that it was so random at times. Like when it just popped on and she was doing a flash mob kind of thing. I well, uh, see that Napoleon Dynamite. I get this that has, has random. This has some random stuff like that. Yeah, it 100%. never struck me like that. Well, it's not it's not as Napoleon Dynamite. Right. Napoleon Dynamite. Right, right, right. But right. it has subtle humor in it like that, um, and which I, I really, really appreciated. Uh, and I, I even enjoyed the ending. And I love the ending. Um, where he was he just came up after he just beat up that guy. And then he, was, he just asked, well, what do you think about uh, me falling in love with your girl? And then it ends. That's my kind of ending. Yeah. I, I know, love that. I know you love that kind of ending. For me, I it just it. was another, like, the final thing of I don't know why I needed to watch this because it was funny and entertaining that's why not for me <laughs> <laughs> I'm well, glad you enjoyed it <laughs> me too yeah uh, regardless let us know what you thought about the film please down below and uh, what should be our next not only Fahad Vasil but Malayalam in general. I would like to get to Malayalam Classic for Classic Month because we, we were supposed to last Classic Month and we, we gave it a different year though didn't we yeah, that's Malayalam's gonna be more early nineties to eighties. Yeah, uh, because they say they're golden ages, kind of that. Yeah, and who are like the groundbreakers well, in Malayalam cinema from the very outset? Well, the groundbreakers are Mohanlal and uh, Mohanlal and um, um, who's the one in Parambu? Um, I'm forgetting his name. Mamudi. Uh, Mamudi. Thank you. Uh, those are the two like epic people like that. Yeah. They, they, they are my Leon cinema. Um, so, yeah, for, for Fafa, what should be his next? I, Trance, I, I heard his performance is one of his best, but the film is not as good as his performances. That's okay, that happens. Um, but uh, yeah, for Fafa, what should be next? And for Malayalam Cinema, what should be our next Malayalam film that we should watch? Let us know down below.